Christina McFarlane in Rio in Pyeongchang in Tokyo and this is CNN. While winning a third straight Australian Open title would add to his legacy, it is Peter Carter who made Federer the player he is today. Carter discovered the Swiss child prodigy in the city of Basel and is in Roger's heart every time he's on court. You mentioned Peter Carter. We know that his parents often come and join you in the box at yep. the Australian Open. For people who may not know, just explain who this man was to you. Yeah, I mean, so it's actually a really nice story. He came to play club tennis in, uh, in my club back in Basel at the Old Boys Tennis Club. When I was little, you know, he was uh, the, also one of the star players on the team. Well played by Peter Carter. So Peter was really a really important uh, person in my life because uh, I think if I can say thank you for my technique today, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's to Peter. But disaster struck before Roger could show his mentor Peter what he was capable of. Carter died in a car crash while on honeymoon in South Africa 16 years ago. He passed away the year before you won your first slam at Wimbledon, obviously. What do you think he would have thought to see you here now with 20 grand slams? I hope he would be proud. I guess he didn't want me to be a, um, a wasted talent. So I guess it was somewhat of a, um, a wake up call for me when he passed away. And I really started to train hard. Is there anything you'd like to say about him in context of where you're at in your life right now? I think uh, what I would like to say is that I've been incredibly fortunate to having had the, the right people at the right time, the right coaches at the right time. I mean, sure you could argue I made those decisions, but uh, I also got lucky along the way. tennis whites and serve up the strawberries and cream. Day one of Wimbledon is underway and World Sport is live at the All England Club. Well, the big three have certainly pushed each other to great heights over the course of their careers and now only five slams separate Roger, Rafa and Novak. Joining me is tennis broadcaster and writer Ravi Uba. And Ravi, one thing I want to talk about first is that the big subject overshadowing the start of this Wimbledon fortnight has been the question of seedings and Rafa Nadal voicing his disapproval uh, of his situation he finds himself in. Now that we know the order of play, do you think he was right to do that? Well, first of all, Chrissy, I have to say that I, I agree with their CD format. What? Well, some sort of breaking news, as it were, over the weekend is that uh, Novak is actually now going to be coached by Goran Ivanisevic, which was just announced just this weekend. Um, what do you make of that partnership? What do you think Goran will bring to Novak's game? Well, it's just a reflection of what we just discussed. I think he's a little bit unsure where he's going. Everybody else of the, these top guys, they have a sort of a big name on, on, their, on their side. I want to ask you about something you posted on Twitter. You spoke about the fact that you're done with being shy. What, what prompted you to tweet about that? I don't know. I think people know me as being really shy. Like anyone that could see me in the very beginning of my career would know like even going into the locker rooms I was very shy and I wouldn't know what to do or where to put my things and I want to also take like the quarantine time to just think about everything and for me I have a lot of regrets before I go to sleep and most of the regrets is due to like I don't speak out about what I'm thinking the NBA has always been a league that prides itself on its player and its coaches being able to speak out openly about political and societal affairs. I just wonder after the events of this week and the fallout we've seen, whether you would both feel differently about speaking out in that way in future. Um, excuse me, we're taking the basketball questions only. It's a legitimate question. This is an event that's happened this week during, during the NBA. It, this particular question has not been answered. James. Any other questions? This is CNN Breaking News. Hello, I'm Christina McFarlane. Breaking news this hour out of Venezuela. Tear gas and black smoke as demonstrators clash with soldiers along the border with Colombia. Today is the day self-declared interim President Juan Guaido vows aid will make it across. 
but embattled President Nicolas Maduro is doing all he can to stop it by blocking the borders.